guys, what's up? How's it going? Rob Sutton here from Huntsville, Alabama, actually. Just checked into the hotel, and today we're gonna to talk about hyperlapses. So one of the cool thing about hyperlapses, they're great shots for B-roll. You already know how much I like time lapses. Well, hyperlapses just bring that second element of movement into the stage and just really gives a good like zoom in feeling when it comes to video. So what we're gonna do is go outside, shoot a couple of them, visit a brewery, visit downtown, and we'll come back, edit a couple, and see how it goes. Let's get at it. All right, so the idea here is we're gonna take pictures of this building over here. We're gonna pick somewhere in the crosshairs of the camera, make sure you have them on so you can line it up and take multiple shots by taking steps. Let's do it. All right, guys, back home in my office here in Atlanta. We're gonna take those shots that I took out in Huntsville and actually create them into a hyperlapse. So let's go ahead and dive into the computer, look at the shots and see what it takes to turn this into a smooth hyperlapse. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is import all of these images into Lightroom. You'll see here I have my sequence. This image sequence ended up being 59 shots long. Ideally, you'd want this to be over 100 to really get a couple seconds worth. I think it's about 200 per four second clip. But we're gonna go ahead and work with this one just to show you how it gets done. Now, I like to generally go ahead and edit my photos before we even bring them into Premiere. So we'll go ahead and do that in Lightroom. Then we'll bring them in as a sequence and make it into the hyperlapse. We're just gonna do a quick edit on these so you get the point. Obviously, you probably wanna take your time just a little bit more with this, but for the sake of the tutorial, let's get rolling. Once you get done editing that first image, you can select the first image, hold shift, select all, hit sync, and it'll synchronize the edits across all the images. It really kind of saves you from going through each individual one, and it keeps exposure and contrast settings all consistent through the entire hyperlapse. You are gonna to wanna to go back and spot check your exposure in certain situations, like if you're going into a shadow or you're changing lighting conditions. All the settings aren't gonna work all the way across, especially if you're doing kind of like a sunrise setup. But in this instance, I'm outside in broad daylight right in the middle of the day. So everything worked all the way across the board and now we're ready to export. For the purposes of the hyperlapse, we're gonna go ahead and export all of these at full res JPEGs. So make sure you do not have resize to fit check. Quality is at 100 and you've got your folder all picked out. Now we just have to wait for all these to export, then we're gonna bring it into Premiere and create the hyperlapse. We're creating a new project. Then you're gonna to go to File, New, Sequence, DSLR 1080p. You can do this in 4K or 1080p. I'll be uploading this in 1080p, so that's what I want to start with. Now it's time to go and import the images we just exported from Lightroom. So right click, import, go to your folder, select the first image in the sequence, come down here, check image sequence, and then open. Now you'll see when you drag this to the timeline, it's gonna give you an error or a clip mismatch warning. What you're gonna to wanna to do here is keep existing settings. Now at this point, we wanna make all the edits to the sequence before we actually do any of the smoothing to create that smooth hyperlapse. You will not be able to do it after you nest this. And I'll show you why. So right now it's pretty zoomed in. But what we're gonna to wanna to do is go to effect controls and adjust the scale. That looks about right. It's also at this point in time where you're gonna to wanna to speed up or slow down the hyperlapse as you feel needed. You can also reverse the sequence if you want to. So for the sake of this video, let's just say we want this one to go at 75%, and that puts us at right about two, two and a half seconds on our hyperlapse. Now, if you hit play now, you can see it's pretty jittery. Since this clip has a higher resolution than the timeline settings, in order to use Warp Stabilizer, you have to now go in and just nest the clip and you'll be able to apply Warp Stabilizer afterwards. So let's go ahead and do that. Right click, nest. It creates that nested sequence so that now you can go in, video effects, distort, Warp Stabilizer. 
And at this point, it's gonna go ahead and analyze your image and create that stabilization. Also where if you really took your time aligning the image with your viewfinder and put a, one of the crosshairs in a vertical and horizontal position like I did right underneath the word Huntsville on this building, it really helps out the image. If you have a lot of back and forth movement, the computer has to work harder to stabilize it so it might zoom in on it more, create more cropping. Now that that's done, let's take a look. And there we go, our hyperlapse is ready to put into our sequence and whatever we're gonna use it for. So guys, there's the hyperlapse tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, hit up the comment section. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, you can hit that thumbs down button. As always, subscribe for more tutorials and reviews. And until then, on to the next one. See you guys later.